Let me ask you this, uh, and let's slide over to a, a different case here uh, quick. So I'm curious to get your thoughts on what is going on with Brian Koberger and Ann Taylor and her litany of questions that were thrown out to 400 potential jurors in Moscow, Idaho. Uh, I know the judge was none too happy about that uh, yesterday. Uh, and, and these are very detailed questions, uh, questions that I was very kind of surprised by thinking, this this almost paints your client as if guilty the way you're you're asking these things and maybe that was the goal to show a prejudiced uh, jury pool. Um, how common is it for uh, uh, an attorney to to put questions out there like this into a very small community um, to to weigh the the prejudice of of there being that or not? It's it, it, look. My dad did it in Gacy. Mm -hmm. um, they they polled they polled the Cook County residents. We did it in Garcia. We mm -hmm. polled. <laughs> so remember the, the the motive behind doing it is for a change of venue motion. Sure. And Taylor was trying to get it moved out of Lata County, uh, which she should. I don't think there's any way that that trial should take place in Lata County. And I don't know if you had the opportunity to watch that hearing last night. Um, it was very interesting, and, and it goes right to what I was saying. And Taylor uh, and their expert, who was the one who put the polling together, uh, said exactly what I've been saying for years, that everything that, that Bill Thompson did in his uh, initial press conference where that PCA was getting dropped, and we all know what that PCA was, and we all know how everybody that's in the true crime community – from the creator side of it was covering the hell out of that yeah. and putting that thing out to the world. Everyone read that PCA. Yeah. Everyone knows all the facts in that PCA. And then that goes to what I was just saying about Delphi. Yeah. It, that, that that's the state getting their theory out. And Bill Thompson was not just saying it's coming out, but he was encouraging everyone to share it, the media to share it. That's prejudicial. Mm -hmm. There's no other way around it. That is unvetted, untested evidence, and it's the state's theory of the case and nothing more. And so every question that was taken uh, or prepared for that thing directly came from the information that was already out to the public. Mm -hmm. So ev every single thing, the knife sheath, the fact that he was arrested in Pennsylvania, that all came from the PCA. Mm -hmm. So they weren't releasing anything in terms of the non like violating the non dissemination order, at least in the estimation, and, and the judge said it. He's like, I'm not dinging you being the defense on this. You know, I mean, every everything was public because the PCA was made public. Mm -hmm. So ultimately, remember again, they are trying to get this thing moved out and yes. out of Lata. So the purpose of doing it and crafting those questions was to be able to show, look. When they dropped this PCA that included all these facts, this is how it affected the general public. This has created a situation where the general public has formed opinions one way or the other on these particular issues because that was laid out to the public at large and especially in this community. And so ultimately, I have no problem with it. I, I really don't. I, I like I, yeah, like sometimes you need to give the judge receipts as to there is no way that we can have a fair trial in this county. And that was the purpose of it. So I wasn't surprised by it. And, and last night, actually, Judge Judge, he was furious yeah. when it first when it first came out, when he first caught wind of it. That was the first hearing where he's screaming and yelling. Last night, he wasn't there. And he allowed the the testimony of their expert to come on, the guy who put the, the, uh, the poll together. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and he gave his background, you know, I mean, this is what the guy does for a living yeah. and, and in order of showing bias and prejudice, um, you know, I mean, it, it's, as, it's a very successful way to do it. And it's scientifically backed, you know, I mean, this guy was a legit expert um, and does this for a living and, and does it for exactly this reason. So, um, yeah, I had no issue with it. But doesn't it also taint a jury pool i mean the questions just in general yes it's out there if someone read the pca they could answer these questions not everybody read the pca i mean you know the, the general public did not i mean those of us following this if you're into the true, true crime yeah then you 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 saw it but if you didn't and you're just an average member of the the community 
this would certainly make you want to go look it at it up and look up all these questions and, and try to learn more about this case. I'd be very curious if I didn't know when I got this huge list of uh, questions uh, asked of me. Um, that in itself just seems like, okay, you've already got a small community. You're already concerned about it being tainted. You throw this out there to 400 people before being told to stop. Those 400 people are going to tell at least 10 other people each about this. Um, aren't you just kind of like, pouring you know dye into the water even more and i know the goal is to move it but are you tainting it yourself to move it that that kind of i think is the concern that that some have or do you disagree with that yeah in a community that small when you're talking about especially a college community yeah. um I, I i would find it hard to believe that a vast majority of the people in that small of a community are not aware mm -hmm. of the case and probably the underlying facts. Now, the way that we handled our, when we did our polling, we did not put any specific facts, mm -hmm. case specific facts in our polling questions. We just wanted to find out had they seen coverage on it. And if, if they had seen coverage on it, had they formed an opinion one way or another, mm -hmm. And if they had formed an opinion one way or another, what was their opinion? Were they did they feel that he was guilty or not guilty based on the coverage they had seen? Mm -hmm. So we kept ours pretty generic. I, I can see your point, but again, like I don't know if they set it up to where we had set it up in our poll that if they answered the first if they answered the first question, have you have you seen any coverage on the Anthony Garcia case? And their answer was no. The poll ended. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, because that was all the data we needed, we okay. just needed to know that that person. So, I don't know if they did that the same mm -hmm. way in this. So, okay. I mean, certainly, if you have somebody that had not heard any of the facts of the case in Koberger and is going through that, you're right. I mean, at that point, their interest is going to be peaked and they're going to be like, oh, yeah, man, I got to look into this. This, this case sounds crazy. So, I, I mean, and that was kind of the state's argument. I mean, we heard the word taint so many times last <laughs> night that ultimately the state will make the argument. And, and ultimately, when it gets to that point that, you know, it's the defense who tainted the jury pool by way of of putting that that poll out there to mm -hmm. the public. You know, can we you know, can we reward them for for yeah. going around, you know, the, the dissemination order, at least in our estimation? and allow this thing to get moved to a different county. Ultimately, the question doesn't relate to that. The ultimate question is, can he get a fair trial yeah. in that county, no matter which way it came about? And then if Ann Taylor has to deal with the disciplinary committee after the fact, that's a different issue because right now all the judge cares about is whether or not Brian Koberger can get a fair trial in that county, yeah. no matter how it came to be. Well, yeah, and you don't want to have to redo this thing after all these years and go, okay, it, it turned out to not be a fair trial because of all of that, and now we have to move this to another county and try it all over again. That's just hell for those families. Uh, and, and if we can avoid it in the first place, why not avoid it? As much as I think people and that community probably want that trial to take place there, and as, as right, you know, as it may be that it should be taking place there, again, do we want to keep going through hell uh, or do we want to eliminate any chance of a, su a successful appeal issue down the road? And that's really what they're doing. Exactly. So. Exactly. Hey, thanks for checking out the video. Be sure to follow us wherever you download podcasts, and especially Apple Podcasts, where you can get advanced episode and premium content on our premium channel right there. Also, be sure to follow us on social media so you don't miss any breaking updates on the stories that matter to you most. We're on TikTok, X, Instagram, Facebook. Just search Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruschi, and you'll find us right there. Again, thanks for watching.